Lindo, welcome back, guys. It's been it's been great. It's been great. I this is what I love to do. I love to get to talk Star Wars. Um, it's it's always been one of my favorite things, and just getting to speak with the boys essentially. It's it's great. It's it's what what really keeps me in the star wars world is that it's so expansive and you can talk about any things and even though you know as as we've mentioned many times you know there there are definitely a lot of things about canon even some things about legends that we don't like i do enjoy the fact that canon is a thing because of the juxtaposition between uh both the timelines you know that there is the ability to be able to compare and contrast that it's not all the same even though i i, I wish it was all the same um it's still it's still pretty great it's i, I will always have a a deep deep love for star wars that being said uh, due to such a deep love of Star Wars, I and my compadres here, we enjoy um, answering different questions about Star Wars, too. Uh, we've got a couple uh, from some of the viewers, some people from Discord also, um, certain questions that people want asked, and we have some answers or at least what we think might be the answers. So one of the first ones came through is from my buddy simply good his first question is was luke stronger than revan and so i was i, I know everyone on this podcast probably has their own specific answer to that so i'm going to start it off so in my opinion i i really do believe that when it comes to raw force power i really believe that revan probably has the advantage in star as far as raw force power now when it comes to practical use of the force skill with the force different number of skill sets in the force i think luke had him beat i think if it comes to a straight up fight as far as dueling is concerned, I do, I, I, I firmly believe that Luke would win. But I think if you're just talking about like raw power gonna destroy something, uh, I, th I think Revan has Luke beat like straight up and down the court, <laughs> regardless of how you look at it. But maybe my, uh, my compadres here have, uh, have different opinions. So, uh, let's see what Winchy has to say. No, I actually, uh, I actually agree with that. Luke had much more, um, pinpoint skill i would say like you know if you if you asked him to do something that was delicate um but required a lot of talent uh luke had it right um but if you wanted somebody to just you know bring down uh you know bring down a space station you know, whatever you know with the force Re revan's got it revan's revan takes the cake he's he's so powerful he's got so much raw power that he has you know the ability to just unleash at the, you know the drop of a hat you know, even going toe to toe with Vishit for a little while, but you know, he doesn't have, and which is why, um, her name's Bastilla, right? Like why she was able to to you know bring him back. She had better better skill with with what she was doing, right? She had mm -hmm. more more tact, um, as opposed to Revan's just brute force. So yeah, I, I agree with what you said, um, Luke definitely has more. You know, like it takes like ten thousand hours to master something, right? But like. Mm -hmm. Luke put in the 10,000 hours, th that kind of thing that people always say, right? Luke put in the 10,000 hours, Revan had a couple thousand hours, and he was just slinging around his his power thinking he's the the boss. Okay, what about you, Hobbs? It's Luke, Luke slaps Revan five ways from Sunday. <laughs> is that and, it? Um, is, is, is that it, then period? Like, like, <laughs> like no, period. Like, uh, like, and that's, and not just anything that you guys have said, not just the stuff that you guys said, but like the feats that Luke had alone literally make Revan look like he's a part of the Mickey Mouse Club. So the, the fact um, you know what, what I always think about when it comes to Luke is like the fact that well, he's able he was able actually yeah, he was the first person to navigate the Maw, which is a cluster of black holes, flew into the middle of a cluster of black holes using only the force to kind of go through it and, and find the middle. Like like <laughs> Revan could could never. <laughs> yeah, for real. Like it, it's just like he Luke is literally the sorcerer supreme of the Star Wars universe. <laughs> and you know he went toe to toe with Abeloth, right? Revan could not have gone toe to toe with Abeloth. Oh, no, not with with Abeloth? Hell no. Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, so the second question is: Callista Ming during Clone Wars or Mara Jade pre-assassin? 
Are you asking who would win in that fight? Because if that's the case, then definitely Kalista Ming. The one thing you got to understand about Mara Jade is before that she was an assassin, she only had... Well, she didn't even really have the understanding. She kind of assumed it, but Palpatine is the one who knew that she was force sensitive and that's how he was able to communicate with her across the galaxy but she had no force training at that point um she was just kind of right. going on she was just kind of doing her own thing honestly going with the flow yeah and Callista was a full-on trained jedi not not close to master level but she could have she probably could have held her own in like a duel against Anakin at least Anakin will win for sure but she could have held her own she could have definitely held her own in a fight versus uh versus Anakin Hunter do you agree with that yeah um I mean we saw we saw her a little bit in Clone Wars right like you know back in the the books there I mean she she definitely was a, a Jedi you know and yeah uh, Mar was just a force sensitive assassin there's there's no there's no contest there um absolutely she, absolutely and then he had a third question. If Anakin had the high ground, would he still have lost? Yes. Uh yeah, this answer this question was actually answered in Obi-Wan, the show. Yeah, it didn't matter. The master beat the apprentice. Yeah. Or the the, the Padawan. Like we watched Obi-Wan after ten years of no, you know, cut off from the force almost, still pull up and beat uh beat vader's butt right like he whooped his ass obi-wan was also the padawan of qui-gon who was the padawan of dooku who was like the best like duelist duelist a, a, yeah. of the yeah. of the order so like of the order he, yeah granted anakin is under obi-wan but technically obi-wan is closer to dooku than anakin is so I, i'm gonna give that mm -hmm. some credit too <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Even though Anakin is the one that eventually defeated Dooku, right? Yeah, by killing him. That scene is great. I so I don't have any of you ever read the um, well, Hunter might have the novelization of Episode Three by Matt Stover. I had, I had the, bit, uh, yeah. the audio. Book. I had the audio book for it. <laughs> okay, well, that I love that view of Dooku. Because you find out in the books that Dooku was like, racist isn't the right word, but like he absolutely hated people who were like part droid or like who had any kind of like non-human parts of their body. So not only did he detest Anakin for having like the droid hand, but mm -hmm. when Anakin's fighting him, he slices off both of Dooku's hands and Dooku's first thought is i'm a cripple now like i think that's yeah. hilarious like like he's yeah. about to he's about to lose his life and he's like god damn it i ain't got no hands <laughs> yeah yeah they talk okay. that's what they talk about in the book right they that they um they were trying to get the choreography from the book i believe to be in there in that deleted scene if i if i'm remembering correctly i and, i believe that and it was the same and it was and it was the same with um the duel with Sheev. <laughs> she um <laughs> Yeah, I know. I, I can't wait till the one episode where we talk about Palpatine and his exploits because I have a pretty outlandish theory about Palpatine. And just to give you a hint, I believe that he is the like the galaxy's most powerful closeted gay man. I, I, I'm oh, ready. I, oh, I, I, I can... <laughs> hold on, hold on. I have ways to confirm that. So I I'm glad someone is either. on this... I'm so glad someone is on this train with me. Because, like, I... I, I have I, ways to confirm that. <laughs> man is too smart, I, too like, sassy, and too obsessed with a ripped blonde dude to not be a closeted <laughs> gay mastermind. Like, no way. I mean, I mean, no way. Let's talk... Let me, like, 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 let me segue into how my man was just like good really really close on that one it was crazy. <laughs> no but we'll, like, when we yeah, when we do the palpatine episode we will need that i'm just gonna let you know right now i'm gonna let you because mm -hmm. I, I need it mm -hmm. i need it for my case mm -hmm. i need the world to know yeah. that palpatine was yeah. a closeted gay I, I need the world to know yeah. that okay, so the next question here is after anakin was there a new force jesus slash chosen one 
or was it only him? And this question is from my brother. We were talking about it the other day, and he was basically asking me about Anakin. We were talking, and I was like, well, yeah, you know, Anakin's, like, basically forced Jesus. No father was kind of conceived with the force or the, you know, the, 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 the forcey spirit, the Holy Spirit equivalent, whatever. And my answer to this question is basically no uh the chosen one was a prophecy that started thousands of years you know even in the time of revan and a lot of like even like jedi scholars and stuff had thought that the chosen one at the time might have been revan and there's a lot of people who thought that the prophecy could possibly be revan but no i i think that it was basically just anakin and that he fulfilled the prophecy you know he's the one who ended up tossing palpatine down the chute into the core of the Death Star, blowing him up and bringing a balance to the Force. I don't know if it brought balance to the Force, if that makes sense, but definitely brought a, a balance, you know, the, the the culmination of thousands of years of the rule of two coming down, literally falling down a shaft and exploding. And I, I think that that's what he was supposed to do. And though it was a, a definitely a rocky road, I, I still believe that, you know, basically at the end of the day, Anakin was the only chosen one and fulfilled the prophecy. This is lies. This is blasphemy that they teach you at the temple. All right. There's no way that uh, Anakin ever fulfilled the dang prophecy because what did, what did he even accomplish? He wiped out almost all the Jedi and he dropped some old dude down a chute, but the old dude actually happened to come back to life because magic force stuff that he can put his soul into another body. He never actually died. So what did he actually accomplish? Nothing. He postponed the Empire being around for like 10 years. Maybe five. It's okay, all lies. And he stopped, but he stopped. The, he brought an end to the rule of two. The, the Sith had did changed. He? Yes. Yes. What about absolutely. what about Snoke and Kylo? They're basically the rule of two. Okay, look, we've been Snoke spending this the, entire the episode. For... <laughs> we've been spending this entire episode talking about legends, and I, I get we talked about canon somewhat comparing Luke Skywalker, but I'm talking about legends. In I mean, I, I still think even to a degree, it doesn't even work with Snoke because if like even when Snoke was around, Palpatine was still yeah he had to somehow return, so he was already he was probably already there in the beginning, like in the background, just somewhere, just hiding. And still, what was I mean, what was the planet called? Snoke, Exegol. Snoke's, yeah, and Snoke was his little puppet, so it was basically him all along anyway. So I mean, Kylo was just the next in a long line of skywalkers that keep getting tempted into dumb stuff okay you know what well how about this to, to keep with the theme of of today's episode let's do it like this so let's start about anakin as the chosen one in legends and then anakin as the chosen one in in canon how about we do that because i feel like that makes it a little bit easier to battle and talk about and i feel like i don't sure, know I it, 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 it matches the theme at least now you may have a you may have some points as far as the uh, the canon goes, but as far as legends is concerned, especially since like only towards the end of the legends timeline, like what with like two years of it still being the the canon of the time, they try to incorporate the stuff from the Clone Wars with like the father and the 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 daughter and the son and everything. And, and that was his time to shine, and he, he screwed it up. Okay, I can agree with that, but I still okay. believe he he is the chosen one. He he could have been the chosen one, but that that moment, in my mind, that was his chance. Like, the father, the daughter, the son, he was supposed to take the father's place. They're the, like, celestials, the big, the big force wielders. They're the ones that keep... Abeloth locked up tight in her little ma cave. Okay, and then here comes Anakin with his his buddies, and they show up in the whatever other place it's called. All right, and what does he do? He gets all of them killed instead of taking the father's place and putting some discipline into the kids. He gets them all killed, ruins the whole balance, unleashes Abeloth. There's absolutely nothing about fulfilling the prophecy in that story. Matter of fact, he did the opposite of fulfilling the prophecy. He probably created a new one where someone else had to deal with his problem. I, I just, I can't agree with that because 
ultimate balance in the force was was restored like yeah because once palpatine is gone that is the quickest shot for luke skywalker himself to establish the new jedi order to bring but back he didn't the, for so long okay that, that that doesn't mean anything like you got to understand balance to okay balance to the force right so you have two bad guys vader and palpatine right. who are mm-hmm. basically for all intents and purposes the only major force users in the galaxy at the time now you can kind of say that that like luke is just naturally inclined to be super force sensitive super powerful because he's a skywalker but when those two big pieces die i mean you gotta think think about it like a scale heavily weighted on the dark side now these two pieces are just gone and though like maybe maybe it's not perfect balance but there's basically no one in the galaxy at the time who is big like big force like you literally got one like granted there are other few offs here and there and everywhere and of course the force is going to manifest itself but the fact of the matter is the last line of the prophecy says a chosen one shall come born of no father and through him will ultimate balance in the force be restored i just don't think that he brought balance to the force i just i i don't i don't feel like what he did yeah he 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 got rid of uh you know, big man Palpatine. At the end of the day, like he comes, Palpatine comes back. The guys, the guys alive. There's plenty of other big bads that keep coming along. Like, and all it really does is give Luke a little bit of time to start trying to rebuild the Jedi Order. But I don't think that was the time that that Vader was supposed to shine. Vader wasn't the part of the prophecy. Vader wasn't supposed to fall in the first place. But because Palpatine groomed him for so long, which is a <clears throat> topic that we hear a lot about recently grooming <laughs> since he groomed him for so long he was able to turn him away from his destiny and, and turn him into something you know perverse so okay i mean i i understand like yes he did turn him away from his destiny like okay sure but his son brought him back like that, that's that's he was redeemed it, it doesn't matter that he turned away from his destiny he turned back to his destiny like a path like two roads diverge in a yellow wood right but like in the end you're still going to get to 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 whatever goal is at the end like it 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 doesn't matter that he he was turned away and i mean that's that's also part of the prophecy i mean it, it literally says when the force itself sickens past and future must split and combine like so i mean i feel like that is indicative of saying that you what you're talking about uh, of basically palpatine swaying anakin off of his destiny i mean i feel like that's a hint at that the force itself sickens the chosen one who who is supposed to bring balance to the force is pulled off the course and the force is sickened by it so i feel like the sickening uh more refers to the the way that the jedi were losing their touch with the force the not necessarily just pulling the chosen one away and you know bringing power into the the sith because balance is good and evil it's always you know one or the other is going to be on top or fighting for you know control of the other that's that's still balanced but the part where you say like you know past and future split and then come back together right i think that straight is talking about the the father and the kids the past is the celestials the future is anakin and they split because the father dies and they come together because anakin takes his place and he is supposed to to guide the the force through them but i still i still think that was his 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 moment no but if that's the case if they must split and combine they never did sure they did they they fought and tried to kill each other well how did they combine well that was the point Anakin was supposed to join with them and and like guide them. That so so is your him, point that the that the that that the prophecy was never fulfilled? Yes, my point is the prophecy was never fulfilled. The question is, after Anakin, was there a new Force Jesus or chosen one, or was it only him? So then, yes, if that's my the answer case, is yes. It was only Alana him? is the new one. No, uh, how Alana is, she, is the new one. How is she the new one? The, the, it says a chosen one shall come, born of no father. We know her father. I'm not saying we, we I'm know not her saying daddy. The chosen. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying chosen one in the terms of that prophecy. That prophecy is done for. It's it's gone. It failed. That's not Anakin how prophecies was supposed work. to do the thing. He didn't do the thing. Sure it is. This That's is the only it. only prophecy we hear about, really. Like how how many prophecies in in Star Wars do we do we know about? I'm pretty sure only that one. Exactly. So there's no precedent to say that prophecies have to come true. Okay, but there's also no precedent that, to say that there's a new chosen one. But there is because we have a vision. We have the knowledge that that Cadis. Okay, got. Okay, but using your using your logic against you, like. It, Who's to say that that's gonna come true? It's especially I'm since not canon. It is. Especially, especially we, since we don't canon know. has erased that. Exactly. So you can't say that you have no empirical evidence to support your claim. That doesn't even make sense. It, like no way. Like you could say. I mean, th there were plenty of force visions, though. Like who's to say that a force vision is equivalent to a prophecy? But it's a little different because he was in the well of knowledge. Right. It's a little different because he was in the well of knowledge okay. that grants you different those because kinds he of. Also, he also forced the change to happen. Right. Which means that the force, things like that can change. You can't force a prophecy. That's not. But you can't force a prophecy. Sure you can. No, you can't. Who says you can't? Tell me what. You, find me one other example ever in anything where someone has forced a prophecy. Come on. I'll wait. I got time. Uh, <clears throat> uh. All right, let, let me let me let me think. <laughs> okay, I feel like I feel like I could pull some like Dune references into here. I feel like there's some stuff they did in Dune, if I remember correctly, where Paul just if screws it all up. If you remember correctly, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. No, good, good uh, case. Solid, solid foundation. <laughs> <laughs> Look here. All right, Alana's the new one. They were building her up to be the new one. That's how it's gonna be. Okay, in you know my what? Mind. And I, I'll I'll concede that. I will concede that 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 may maybe they were building her up to be a new one, but we don't know. And I don't think that there's enough evidence. No, and we never will. Yeah, we never will. But I don't think there's enough evidence to to even start start that argument. Like, sure. There was a force vision. I feel like there's enough to like get it going. I, obviously, there's not enough to like come at you. Here's the here's the excerpt from this scripture okay. saying X so, Y Z. But okay, okay. listen, but, listen. Then. So so I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take your point and make another point. If you're going to say that, then I'm gonna say no. Screw off. It was Ben Skywalker because there was also a vision on a on a battlefield of Ben Skywalker facing Vestara and if anyone if I think that anyone has the potential to be the next chosen one it's Ben Skywalker his dad is Luke Skywalker his mother is Mara Jade both of which are incredibly more strong in the force compared to Jason Solo and Tenel Ka having a a child together Okay, I have, I, so vision, I, and I have the same, of... but I have the, I have the same base you do. A, a vision from two different people at that. You've got one person, I've got two coming from two That's... stronger force parents. That's fair. That's fair. However, I've got the exact same. It didn't argument come from the well of knowledge. Okay, but it could have. We don't know. They didn't look. Well, there you go. Well, so you have no, you. you I have, have just no... as strong of an argument as you do. That's the point I'm trying to make. <laughs> I'm not saying it's a strong argument. I'm just saying, in my opinion, the question was, do you think that there's another chosen one? And I think there is. I, I can I can definitely see that. Like, I can definitely see the point you're arguing. I just disagree. Now, I do think the actual prophecy itself is open to interpretation. I think that, especially since I, I believe it's uh, Yoda who says a prophecy misread could have been. Something like that. Mm -hmm. I think talking strictly legends, in my opinion, it was only ever Anakin as the chosen one. And it's only, and I, I know it's like probably the weakest point that I have, but it's, it's literally and simply because of the fact that the prophecy says a chosen one shall come born of no father. I think I'm, that, I'm not denying the... that Anakin was the chosen one at all, especially in terms of that prophecy. I agree that he was the chosen. One. I'm I'm totally on board with that. I just don't think that he brought balance to the Force. I don't think he fulfilled the prophecy fully. Okay, like well, he was even, meant to. We can go with that. And even though he may, maybe he didn't bring fulfill the prophecy, I, I'm willing to concede that point. Also, I still think. That he was the only chosen one, and that, and that that is my that that's because the question is asking, 
After Anakin, was there a new force, Jesus, or chosen one, or was it only him? My answer is that it was only him. It was only ever him. There was never a prophet, like, though we have a vision of, of Alana as Queen of the Jedi, it, there was never a prophecy. I think what makes Anakin the chosen one is the fact that there was a prophecy about him, and though he may not have fulfilled him, he is the only one who meets the criteria of born of no father to be the chosen one. And that's why I think that it was only him. That there was no one else that was close to being the, the chosen one described in that prophecy. And that... Oh, yeah, for sure. That Anakin is... Like, the answer to to Brick 3PO's question is the fact that it was only him. That's the point yeah, I'm trying I, to make. I, I agree that... In terms of that prophecy, it is only Anakin. He is the only chosen one in terms of that prophecy. I just do think that they were building Alana up to be the next chosen one. And I feel like at some point they would have pulled a prophecy out of some random holocron that they found in some, you know, forgotten temple or whatnot and would have busted out with a, oh man, she's the next, you know, force goddess or whatever. I think that was, that was going to be the build up of um, but they never got there, of course, because Disney stole it all. I do agree that in terms of the, the prophecy in question, no, uh, there's no one else except Anakin that fulfills that, uh, that marker. I win. Get wrecked. I win. <laughs> I'll, I'll, eat, I'll eat dirt. It's fine. <laughs> now, now that we've, we've, we've hashed out the legends, I just want to go back to canon because I think that my answer for canon would still be the same way. Now, originally, I thought that after watching The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, that it could have been possible that Rey would have been the chosen one. Until we got The Rise of Skywalker, and then you're like, she's Palpatine's granddaughter, what what the hell? Like, what, what are you guys doing? Because, like, that would have made sense, because we didn't know anything about her parents so if you had told me born of no father i could have believed it ultimate balance to the force in my opinion because i feel like ray is the cl closest thing that we get to like a gray jedi in the canon timeline at least from media's perspective so yeah and so um and i also agree that it, it kind of lines up with the whole when the force itself sickens past and future must split and combine because luke went off and did his hermit thing and that's the past and then future you know she's doing her own thing but then they come together at the end you know he she gets some you know wisdom at least some guidance from him and that's them combining now you had stopped at the last jedi and told me that ray could have been like the the next chosen one I would have, I could have believed that until Rise of Skywalker. Right, until they even, showed you her literal parents. Yeah, exactly. But but you know, like so I guess I guess my my answer to that question for canon is it's still only Anakin as as the chosen one. I don't know how I, what do you think about that? No, I agree. Um Rey's definitely not the chosen one. She I mean, she's cool. She's Rey. She's Palpatine's granddaughter, which is definitely a thing on its own. But yeah, no, she's not the the chosen one. She's just um, chosen by Palpatine to uh, be the protagonist. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I you know what you know what I love about about Star Wars and Palpatine is that like regardless of what timeline you're talking about, that dude was an actual galaxy brain, closeted gay, but he, galaxy uh, brain. He he does he does do um, quite a bit of machination. Uh, the inner the machinations guy, like, of my mind are an enigma. <laughs> he's working for like forever to to infiltrate the the galactic senate to because he doesn't necessarily like you know fighting with lightsabers because he likes showing off his force powers and his big brain more. He orchestrates an entire war where the Jedi get them by the army of Jedi killers that he claimed using their money. And then, you know, afterwards, after you kill him and you think he's dead, well, he just comes right back all along. That was his plan. And, oh, he has a granddaughter now, so he can uh, hop in that, too. All right. So actually, uh, I don't want to I don't want to miss you, Hobbs. Did you have a did you have any answer to that? That one was that one was my chance to let you guys go at it while I ate popcorn. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, so then we'll move on to the next question. So we're going, let's see, this one was from, I believe this one's from Quix. I think this one was from Quix. Is Starkiller from Star Wars Legends stronger than Darth Vader? So in my honest opinion, I think that Starkiller's force potential is definitely greater than Darth Vader's because Darth, uh, not Anakin Skywalker though, because Anakin Skywalker with a full body, the chosen one as Darth Vader would be fucking insane. But Darth mm-hmm. Vader, after losing so many fucking limbs, I think that Star Killer would definitely have more force potential. But he just doesn't get the resources he needs because he's trained in secret. Palpatine doesn't know about him. When he finds out, he orders him to die. I don't I don't think that he ever gets to be stronger than Darth Vader. So the answer to my answer to your question is no. He's not stronger than Darth Vader, but he had the potential to be. That that would be my honest answer to that question. Bob, do you want to go? You you played the games more than I have. Um, yeah, no, uh, for sure, I agree. Now, once it now, if you got into the DLC where like you were like the Sith stalker or one, you could say that he would po- he possibly had the potential. But like as far as it goes without the DLC, you get very very close. But it was just like. Uh, Nikita said he just didn't have the resources or, or anything like that to be properly trained. Like if he were properly trained, then yeah. But like, like out of out of it all, no, absolutely not. Yeah, I um, I only ever played the DS games, so I never got DLC, man. But uh, I I agree. I mean, he he trained like you know he trained Judge Vader trained him, but like the master is kind of the same like Obi Wan Anakin thing. Like Anakin could try, Anakin gets close. But he never quite gets there to beat Obi Wan, right? Same deal. Star Killer tried. He got close. He got, but he got trained by the dude. So the dude knows every one of his moves already. Mm-hmm. He may have the potential, but like you said, he just didn't get. He didn't. He got snuffed out before. Uh, before he could make it. Yep. And that kind of that's a good segue into the next question that I got asked, which was someone asked, "Is Luke actually stronger than Anakin?" And the, in my opinion, the answer to that question is yes, because where Luke gets at the end is just way stronger than where anakin had time to because like losing the the one hand the first hand to dooku that's fine because most of his body is still actually his body so he's a better conduit for the force but by the time he becomes darth vader losing basically becoming a human stump kind of kind of stops that now like i like i was mentioning before like if you have a darth vader where the only thing that he is missing is his right hand i that that vader trained or that yeah that vader trained to fruition kills palpatine hands down like there's no way palpatine could ever compete that is a you gotta understand that is legitimately forced jesus like midi chlorian count higher than yoda coming straight out like a man like his mom got impregnated by the force came out as just a, a royal badass trained late sure but any training to like to, to completion to actual mastery of the force like i don't think there's anyone in the star wars universe who would have been stronger than a, a fully trained anakin with a human body but when it comes down to if luke is actually stronger than anakin i think regardless of if you look at it from a canon standpoint or if you look at it from a legend standpoint the answer is always yes luke is stronger than anakin yeah i agree you know even we never see, uh, like, for instance, well, I mean, Vader would n- never project himself across the universe uh, as, like, a force, you know, entity that he can, looks real, except for, like, you know, the footprints, right? Also, Luke was able to use force lightning, in something Vader never could do. Mm-hmm. And, like, Luke had, what, Shatterpoint? I, Vader didn't have Shatterpoint, right? Like, there there were so many, so many things that Luke could do that, that Vader and Anakin just never, yeah. never got, and Shatterpoint's- you know, was- Busted. Even Jaina could it use is. Shatterpoint. That shit is. I love Shatterpoint. That's one of my favorite force Speaking abilities. Of Shatterpoint. There is a new tabletop Star Wars game called Star Wars Shatterpoint, and I want to talk to you about it after this because it looks awesome, and I think you'd like it oh, a bet. lot. Oh, bet. You, you what is Shatterpoint? Shatterpoint is a force skill that allows you to see like how basically fate and what your actions intertwine to form crystallized weak points that if you hit the entire thing will literally shatter or you know just disintegrate jason solo used this uh on beskar jason solo was able to shatter beskar by tapping it 
Just a little tap. That's that's how strong it is. Yeah, it's it literally like crystallizes a point on an object or a person or whatever. If you hit that point, it's game over. It doesn't matter who it. Like the reason why Mace Windu does not kill Palpatine, he sees his shatter point, and because Anakin intervenes, the shatter point shifts, and then he gets his shatter point hit and dies. Like that. That is basically. The, the gist of it you hit someone shatter point is gg all right uh let's see moving on to the next question we got a lot of good questions today we're not going to answer all of them today where this is going to be the last one that we answer uh but anything that was asked that was not answered today we will get into future episodes we'll make sure to keep a uh a log of them but uh this next question was also asked by our, our good friend quicks and it is did the inhibitor chips in the clone troopers heads really affect their aim when they got activated now what i'm going to say about this is i personally do not think so and i don't have any evidence to support that i i believe that the clone war like the clones until their death were just peak soldiers who were clones of of one of the the like the best you know mandalorians of the time the mandalore at that and I think that their aim wasn't really affected. Like maybe towards the end when they get older, but we, I mean, we even see Rex as an old ass bald man in the desert, still, still f***ing them up basically. Um, and so, no, I don't think that affected their aim once it got activated. I think the reason why clone trooper or not clone troopers, why stormtroopers suck so much is that they stopped making clones and started enlisting people and people suck <laughs> that's basically why i think like as you progress from stormtroopers to or clone troopers to stormtroopers you get less accurate shots because you just don't have the badasses that you that you had during the clone wars you've got regular old people coming in conscripted and kind of trying to do their own thing and absolutely failing at it that's why stormtroopers suck yep absolutely I'm, yeah i have no points like conscripted soldiers are not going to be better than an entire force of jango fets you know sub mandalorian clones were, who are trained from trained birth from birth <laughs> yeah. yeah there's no way literally uh, what was it called was it the flash learning what was it called oh yeah yeah, yeah. it was it was it was flash learning they they yeah. literally just like downloaded it into their brains almost right yeah so I, I think that that the inhibitor chip did nothing except for stop them from listening to their own emotions and had to listen to direct orders which is what i mean like they were clones but they were also like the books do a really good and you know what the clone war series does a good job at showing us this too is that these they, they may have been clones as far as like genetic templates go but they were all their own individuals these were all their own people they were yeah. not all Django fett they were all cloned from Django fett but they were not all Django fett yeah which that's is, what made it yeah amazing. something i love that they brought back from the books you know they weren't just guys in helmets they were guys in helmets who were different guys in each helmet <laughs> yep they had names and identities they had personalities oh yeah uh, but that is all for this evening, guys. Thank you all so much. Be sure to follow the podcast on YouTube and on Spotify at The Force Unscripted. May the force be with you. Thank you all all so much for tuning in. And we will see you all next time. I hope you guys enjoy the little ending song that we have played. I got some music commissioned and I hope you guys enjoy and we will catch you all later.